All right, this morning on our VFR build, I wanna get this front end off of here so we can work on the steering stops because this is a custom front end. This is from a different bike. It's not meant to go on this bike. So we need to customize some things further to make it work. All right, now I've got to detach all this stuff up here. I'm gonna take our clip-ons off as well. Gotta get our brake calipers off here as well. All right, now we gotta get our top clamp off of here. I wanna get the wheel off as well. All right, now our forks have to come out. All right, now we should be able to take this guy off of here. All right, now we've got a bottom triple clamp free from the bike and we can put it into our, our mill over here and we're gonna trim off a good portion of these little steering stops here on the bottom. Because what's happening is that if I put this back in here, this guy lives up in here like this and it when you go to turn the bike it runs into this thing here um, it's supposed to come into contact with this guy back here um, so it should when i'm turning the bike the steering stop is supposed to it's supposed to hit that and that's what's supposed to make it stop but i can't reach that one because this guy on this side is hitting this guy so i need to trim these down here in the front part and see what how much difference that makes for us. What I'd like to do is cut it right about like that, I suppose. Let's mark it. Let's sort of rudely mark these guys. Try and get an idea of where we want to be. All right, actually, I don't think I'm going to use the mill because I forgot it is occupied already with this guy and I don't want to take this out of the lathe at the moment because then I, it'll sort of go out around. If I put it back in there, I'm gonna have to straighten it back up again. And I'm just gonna leave that where it is until I'm finished with that. And also, I'm not really sure how I can clamp that triple clamp. I don't really have a good idea of how to clamp this triple clamp into the mill um, without taking the steering stem out. And I could press this thing out. It's just pressed in and then press it back in when I'm done. But I have to press it out, do my work, press it back in, test fit it, and then if I need to do further work, press it back out again. I don't want to do that. that is way too much work and I'm not sure it's worth the effort. I'm just going to come in here by hand and see if I can trim these things down. I wanted to use the mill because it'd be a cleaner result. You can kind of see this guy I did by hand just to clearance this thing to fit it on the bike. And it's not, it looks like an animal did that. Be nice. The mill would make it a lot cleaner, but Oh well. I'm just looking at this guy and I'm realizing that my plan is to sort of trim off the end here and then add on, weld some material on the end over here. And I'm realizing that I'm, I've got this sort of plastic piece here. I'm gonna have to press this thing out in order to get this plastic piece off of here so I don't melt that thing when I weld on it. So no matter what, I'm gonna have to press this thing out. You may see some mill action on this at some point. Anyways, I'm going to try and do the best I can to get to the point where my sort of test fitting and everything before then and try and get this dialed in as much as possible so that when I do go to mill it, it'll only be once. I only have to press this thing out once. That is my plan at the moment. All right, we've got our little die grinder out. Let's see what kind of damage we can get done here. All right, so here's my first pass at the one one side here. 
So you can see the difference of what I am doing here. Taking off that chunk, that corner. I'm gonna take off that corner on the other side now. And then we'll test fit it back on the bike and see what it looks like. All right, so here is our, where we're at currently. This is our first test fit up. Let's try it out on the bike. All right, we are much closer than we were before. Now you can see there's about a quarter of an inch, which is kind of what I had hoped would happen. I feel like this is the point at which I should be adding material on to this guy. Um, but let's get the fork, at least one of the forks in here. Let's sort of test fit this to see how this actually looks. Get the top clamp on as well. All right, and then one of our clip-ons. All right, I'd like to tighten these guys down. I'd actually kind of like to get this, this tank set up on here a little bit better. All right, so then I wanna set these guys on here to some degree, and I'm gonna get the seat out, stick that on the bike, see where, where I want these handlebars to be. All right, so I've got the tank on here, I've got the seat on here. I kind of want to try sitting on here and get an idea of where I want these <laughs> handlebars to be. When I'm when you're riding, like having your arms out, etc. Like where does the hands, where do these guys need to be approximately? This should provide for a decent turning radius in terms of like where the tire is going to rotate. I feel like that's within the realm of functionality right there. So you can see I've got what I believe is a reasonable gap here between the handlebars and the tank. I'm not sure what a normal stock bike would look like, like a, if you had a CBR or something, like how it comes from the factory. I don't, I don't know, I've never had one. Looking at this um, in terms of like if we had a straight line going down the middle here, and then if I tilt these bars all the way to the side, what kind of angle? we end up with right in here, or it's very similar to the CB500 I've got to compare it to. My next step though is down here, which is we've got this bump stop right there. It comes into contact right up there all the way over. If I move it all the way over here, you can see we still got a gap before it hits that guy over there. I want it to hit that guy over there. I need to add material on. I'm gonna mark this up and get an idea of how much material I, want, I need to add on and want to add on. All right, I've made like a little scrub out of some old um, filler rod. It's got a pointy end on it and it's 90 degrees, so that should help me sort of get in here. I wanna swap it to the other side and do the same thing. And then we'll, when we take it off, we'll actually measure and see See if they're even close to the same. All right, we've got our marks on both sides now. I'm gonna go ahead and take all this apart again and get this bottom clamp out. And got a nice little mark there. I have standardized them so that they're both exactly the same spot on both sides here. And when I measure them, I've got, it's about it's half an inch or so of a gap between what we have left of our, the original bump or steering stops and where we need to extend them to. So I need to extend them out almost half an inch, seven sixteenths, somewhere in, in that range. I am still thinking that welding is my best, my best bet there. And I'm thinking I need to press this stem out in order to do that. Um, the alternative is to maybe cut this steering stop off all the way I've got this marked. I could create another bump stop like on the lathe or whatever out of aluminum. I could drill a hole in here. I could stick that, that bump stop in there and I could plug weld it again from the other side, you know, from this, from this side here and then have my two little bump stops 
you know, all set like that. That's another option. I'm hesitant to take the steering stop or take the steering stem out. That's a pain and um, another complication that I didn't really want to do. And there's a possibility, of course, that I would, it would not go well. <laughs> and we would just have to start over from scratch. So I'm gonna think about this and we'll see you, we'll see you later.